Massimo Marinacci, Professor of Decision Sciences at University of Bocconi and AXA Bocconi Chair in Risk. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Let's first talk about your field of research. So how would you describe your field of research? I'm, this, I'm a, a theoretical economist uh, and in particular uh, I specialize in the study of individual decision making uh, on two aspects, uh, both uh, how people uh, actually behave, uh, especially in economic domains, uh, and how people should behave in such domains. Uh, the two things uh, are quite related because uh, modeling uh, the an ideal uh, mode of behavior uh, which is related to the should be uh, uh, forms a natural benchmark for uh, how people actually behave. So you can always regard actual behavior as a sort of a deviation from an ideal kind of rationality. Thank you. And um, so with respect to the sorts of questions you've been talking about, what are the, the notable findings in your field, uh, would you say? The, 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 the attempt uh, is uh, to understand, uh, so theoretically means uh, in terms of first principles, so to, to understand the basic categories that are relevant for decision making uh, and then uh, elaborating on them uh, and providing uh, some decision criteria that uh, can help uh, uh, making decisions uh, or uh, help describing how people uh, uh, make decisions. Again, the duality between the should and uh, the actual behavior. Uh, but the, the, I would say the distinctive feature of uh, what we do is uh, the idea of starting from uh, first principles. So the clarity of the analysis, uh, the clarity of concept is of paramount importance in uh, the theoretical uh, discourse. But the, I guess the, the main success uh, is the identification of uh, some uh, critical uh, categories. Uh, uh, like when you make a decision, you have to identify properly the contingencies that are affecting the decision, what are the feasible actions, uh, what's really on the table and what's just wishful thinking. So this thing, understanding the, the notion of feasibility is of paramount importance. Uh, so the framework uh, is a first uh, notable contribution. Uh, if you understand uh, the, the theoretical decision theoretic framework, uh, it, it's already, I think, fairly illuminating. Uh, based on that, uh, then there are specific theories uh, that try to uh, build upon uh, uh, assumptions on uh, behavior of people or mental processes. So it can be actual behavior or mental process depending on the theories. Uh, uh, the classic instance is, of course, uh, expected utility that basically says that you have to uh, make a decision based on a multiplication of the utility of the outcomes uh, of the uh, decision times the probability of the, 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 uh, of the outcomes. So this is a basic separation principle uh, with, on the one hand, the analysis of uh, uh, the testes that intrude in the evaluation of uh, the outcomes and the other end uh, on the information that is uh, at the basis of the, the, the uh, assessment of the probability of the outcome. So these two different tracks, uh, the analysis of testes and the analysis of information, the separation uh, that then the special utility uh, brings together it's really a, a, a great achievement uh, of, of, the, of the subject, I'll say. And indeed, some of the finest minds uh, of the last century work on the topic. Uh, uh, I guess the best known is probably for Neumann, but Ramsey, Definetti, Savage, uh, Morgenstern are uh, really among the finest minds. So it took some of the finest minds uh, to come up with the framework and the result I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. A non-trivial achievement. Uh, that is the classic. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is more modern advances. Uh, and the more modern advances are about uh, uh, the understanding of uh, how really uncertainty can affect uh, uh, behavior because the expected utility model is quite stylized in his analysis. Uh, so the modern advances are about extending the scope uh, of the received expected utility paradigm, so to speak. Uh, to really take seriously uncertainty. 
And the uh, last thing I want to mention uh, is that uh, there is a big difference between, I was saying that I am a theoretical economist, so as economists uh, we model behavior as an instrument uh, to understand aggregate behavior, uh, uh, fen aggregate fe economic phenomena, how inflation can come up, things like that. We are not interested uh, in uh, the study of the uh, individual behavior per se, like a psychologist. Uh, this is a simple uh, uh, statement, uh, but uh, is a source of uh, a number of misunderstandings between uh, psychologists on the one hand uh, and uh, economists on the other, because psychologists for some reason tend to, tend to overlook uh, this uh, instrumental role that for us are the analysis of behavior, and uh, so they, they tend to have uh, misunderstanding about what we do. That's an unfortunate, uh, because it would be very prof profitable. Uh, a better mutual understanding. If you agree, let's turn to the normative question now of, of how uh, potentially severe uncertainty uh, can, should be used to guide decision making. So we talked about uh, two questions, we're going to be fo focusing on one. Um, and I'm interested in the general attitude in, in your field towards this sort of issue. Um, would you say there's a, a general attitude or standard expected, accepted reply in your field? And no, so? definitely not. Uh, so I was mentioning before recent advances that uh, I think we're able to provide, uh, again, categories, because this is uh, what theorists do, uh, about thinking uh, on severe uncertainty, uh, something that before was not there. So this is an advance of the last 25 uh, or so years. Uh, so now, there are models, uh, there are frameworks and decision criteria built upon uh, that in my view uh, are quite convincing uh, in providing a, a normative uh, uh, a, a, a normative viewpoint on the problem, but this is my view. Uh, there are uh, other uh, people in my field, let alone in other fields, uh, that instead uh, still regard the spec utility as the only normative uh, possible uh, decision criteria. Uh, so there is a, quite, there is a divide uh, in the field between people that regard these more recent models as possible normative guides, uh, say to, you want to advise a policy maker, uh, as opposed to people that instead uh, believe that the spec utility is uh, the only normative sound way of uh, advising a policy maker. And in particular, uh, my impression is that people uh, in uh, decision analysis or in the more uh, practical slash consulting uh, areas are much more uh, on this uh, aspect utility side. Thank you. So um, what, in, in, the, in the view of the field, what sort of insights do you think uh, your field can offer uh, on, on questions such as this normative question? But I think the, the, the is what theorists can do in general across uh, any discipline. So to provide uh, clarity of thinking. Uh, as I was mentioning before, identifying the right categories, the right framework, uh, I mentioned more specifically uh, um, contingencies, outcomes, action, feasible actions, things like that. Uh, uh, the contribution of theorists is really to lay down uh, the, the key ingredients. Uh, of course, they cannot make decisions on behalf of anybody. That's not our job. But at least we can lay down the, 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 the proper formalization of the decision problem. Uh, I think that's the distinctive uh, contribution of a uh, theorist that okay. can give. Uh, uh, so uh, there is this expression that I heard uh, that uh, a machine of thought. Uh, I guess uh, theorists built uh, such machines. We've talked about what your field has to say. We mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, the fact there were different viewpoints. Um, I'd like to turn specifically to, to your opinion uh, on these sorts of issues. So, um, could you elaborate upon your, your opinion? No, I'm very strongly, a strongly believer that uh, the current uh, modeling, especially on, on the applied side, uh, which is based essentially on the aspect utility paradigm, uh, is not adequate uh, for normative purposes. Uh, of course, that's my position, uh, but I guess nobody can seriously dispute that policymakers uh, 
are in a need of more robust uh, decision criteria. Because at the end of the day, if you try to stick with the standard uh, spec utility, uh, I wouldn't say paradigm is too much, uh, criterion, uh, you tend to offer advice that uh, is seen uh, often as fragile. Uh, so this need of robustness, uh, it's, I guess, uncontroversial. Uh, my view is that we already have uh, the frameworks to properly address such a need, but of course other people would disagree. So uh, what would you say to try and convince someone that uh, an approach other than expect utility would be the correct approach? And how does this sort of debate pan out in your opinion? But of course, it's not, uh, there is no uh, killer evidence, uh, even theoretical argument. Uh, so uh, people that uh, uh, are uh, in favor of a purely expect utility approach uh, tend to invoke uh, uh, the short in principle of savage uh, as, a, as a main argument uh, or uh, often uh, but this is uh, less correct money pump arguments uh, the money pump arguments are basically that if you don't uh, uh, comply with uh, spec utility you run in, into a sure loss i guess this kind of argument uh, is wrong in my opinion instead uh, the short in principle of course it's a it's a compelling argument in favor of spec utility uh, my view is that uh, with the work of Esberg uh, in the 60s, uh, the, the, that kind of uh, uh, examples uh, show that the short in principle is less appealing that might appear uh, on a first glance, uh, relies on much more information than one might expect uh, the first time we come across. So the, the informational demands uh, underlining the short in principle are non-trivial and uh, in my view often not met uh, in the severe uncertainty cases. That's why the short in principle is in my view not so compelling. But again, uh, it's my opinion. It's not that I have uh, a formal argument uh, or any proof, uh, it's just uh, you have to make up your mind. <laughs> so let's, um, let's get a little bit more practical and consider these high stakes, radical uncertainty decisions that we've been talking about, uh, cl climate policy or economic policy. And, um, and suppose you, you have a policymaker's ear for five minutes. You can give general uh, practical advice uh, about uh, uncertainty. What would be the top priority? What would be the, the uh, things, then, the then main then message? Uh, I guess the, the, the top priority would be to understand, to so I was mentioning that the main contribution of, of uh, our field is to provide categories. Uh, so I would try to understand uh, through these categories uh, is thinking or uh, is or thinking. Uh, so try to put uh, the decision problem uh, into an analytical framework uh, to understand uh, again as I was saying, what's feasible. Uh, something that often uh, Often understanding what's feasible is already a big progress because people often talk about things that are just not on the table. So to understand feasibility, what are the consequences, to focus on consequences, for instance, especially in economic decision. Of course, there are ethical considerations uh, to, to consider, but uh, first and foremost, one has to properly understand uh, what are the consequences of uh, the different actions. So just putting the things in the right place, uh, it's already a lot. And then once uh, you do this, uh, you move to a decision criteria. So to, to try to elaborate on uh, either spec utility or a generalization, generalization of spec utility that I was mentioning before. By the way, that's important. I was mentioning generalizations of spec utility. So I, I was referring to an incremental body of knowledge, which is important. It's not a radical alternative. So the, the theories that have been developed in the past 25 years uh, are in an incremental mode, uh, not in a substitutive uh, mode. So these theories just enlarge uh, the scope of spec utility, are not radical alternatives. Uh, so I will try to see if uh, some of these new theories can apply. Okay, so we've talked about your field um, and what it has to say about severe uncertainty in decision. Let's talk about uh, where you think it should go. Um, what, uh, if any, do you think are the, the, the central challenges uh, remaining 
uh, with respect to uh, uncertainty in decision making, uh, in particular. In the, in the first, the, uh, the understanding of uncertainty is still far from exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, uh, one issue is uh, the incorporation of uh, scientific uh, theories, scientific broadly defined, natural science, social science, so it can be economic, physics, whatever, theories uh, into the uh, analysis of uncertainty. Uh, because the field uh, has been dominated by a purely subjective approach, uh, where everything, uh, all probabilities are uh, purely subjective, uh, which is uh, okay, because that's uh, in the final analysis true, but uh, in my opinion has uh, overlooked uh, the importance of incorporating the external knowledge uh, into the framework. Uh, and especially in, uh, you were mentioning climate, uh, whatever, I mean, this severe uncertainty over there, it's an obvious case where this kind of scientific knowledge uh, is of paramount importance uh, in being uh, properly analyzed. So for sure that's one direction. So opening uh, the purely subjective world uh, of decision theory to external uh, scientific, uh, to the incorporation of external scientific theories. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course uh, most of the theory is still essentially static. Uh, most of the decisions are dynamic. Uh, By which you mean, just to be more... Bad. Uh, most of the theory is about one-shot decisions. Uh, you do this, uh, you do that, uh, at, a, at a point of time. Uh, but most of the time, in most of the cases, uh, uh, decisions are repeated. Uh, so when you make a decision today, you have somehow to foresee also f future decisions, so that, that, that you'll be in a position to decide down the road. Uh, you cannot just... Uh, think of being in the vacuum, that you make a decision today and then, uh, as they say, I guess, a, pre, a primolo deluge, something <laughs> like this. And I guess that's a French, uh, uh, so after me, the, 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 so the English, you are the... the, <laughs> the <laughs> deluge, I think deluge. it's English. <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, but in general, instead, the, uh, decisions repeat over time, mm -hmm. and you make uh, many decisions across your life, they are often interrelated. Uh, so a proper framework uh, uh, for this uh, uh, is still lacking outside the expected utility criteria, where instead uh, is very well developed. Uh, so more, generally, more generally is uh, to bring uh, these uh, uh, new theories uh, to a more serious dynamic uh, context. So I guess these are the two, so to bring uh, somehow the external world in uh, and to move uh, in the direction of a time analysis are for sure direction for future mm. research. Okay, thanks. Do you think um, that with respect to these priorities or any others, do you think um, there's fruitful collaborations or perhaps even expectations with respect to other uh, uh, fields or actors or disciplines? Of course. No, the, 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 what I was saying before about uh, having a, the, 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 a way to, uh, to incorporate uh, scientific theories uh, goes exactly in this direction, because the provider of scientific theories are scientists, uh, again, be natural social scientists, so immediately it becomes uh, an interdisciplinary uh, um, action. Okay. Uh, the problem is that uh, my experience is that it's quite frustrating, uh, in the sense it's not easy at all uh, to talk across disciplines. Before I was mentioning the, the, the misunderstanding between psychologists on the one hand and economists on the other hand. That's just one illustration. Uh, on the other side, the natural scientists are often uh, suspicious for some reason of uh, social scientists in general, in particular of uh, economists. Uh, that's very detrimental uh, for uh, policy making, I think. Massimo Marinacci, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Great pleasure.